Hello, so today's video is going to be on the alternative pathway, and we're going to discuss how the pathway works, what's the point of it, and then we're going to discuss paroxysmal nocturnal hemoglobinuria as our clinical correlate for this one. Alright, so the alternative pathway, just like the classical pathway, the point of it is to make membrane attack complex. So we can punch a hole in a bacterial cell wall and release all its content, essentially causing the bacteria to explode. Alright, so unlike the classical pathway, the alternative pathway has spontaneous cleavage of C3. So C3 does not need an antigen-antibody complex to start up the process. It just does its own thing and cuts in half, hydrolyzing itself. Okay, so we have C3A and C3B, so C3 cut itself in half, and now C3A is going to go ahead and act as a chemoattractant for neutrophils and macrophages, and C3B is going to go ahead and continue our pathway. So as you've, as you've seen with the classical pathway, the B components continue it, and the A components act as chemoattractant vasoactive agents. Okay, so C3B is going to go ahead and bind our bacterial cell wall or the external portion of our bacteria. And it's going to go ahead and bind with something called factor B. So C3B is now on our bacterial surface. It binds factor B, forming C3B B. Then we need something called factor D to activate this complex. So factor D is going to go ahead and cleave factor B into BA and BB. And BA leaves the complex, and then we're left with just BB. So we have C3B, BB. Factor D is our cutter over here. Now this is also called C3 convertase. So this is different from the 4B2B we saw in the classical cascade, but it does the same thing. So our C3 convertase is going to go ahead and cleave C3 into C3A and C3B. Again, C3A is vasoactive, and C3B is going to continue our pathway. And from there, we're rolling with the classical cascade. So C3B is going to bind our C3 convertase, Okay, and it's going to form our C5 convertase. So this is C3B, 3B, BB. So this is a different C5 and C3 convertase than you're used to in the classical cascade, but they do the same things. So C5 convertase is going to go ahead and cleave C5 into C5A and C5B. C5B goes and binds C6789 to form our membrane attack complex, which is also called 5B6789. Okay, and then we have our hole, which is poked in our bacteria. Another thing I should mention is if you ever see this molecule called properidin, uh, it's just used to stabilize our C3 convertase activity. So uh, C3 convertase is bound with properidin, C3BBB is bound to properidin, and it stabilizes it on the surface of the bacteria. So that's not going anywhere. The complement cascade is going to follow this bacteria wherever it goes. All right, so let's talk about paroxysmal nocturnal hemoglobinuria and how that works. So paroxysmal means that this is suddenly recurring, so it recurs every night. Nocturnal means it occurs nightly. And hemoglobinuria means you're peeing hemoglobin. Now why is that? It's because your red blood cells are being lysed. So the gene involved here is called pig A. And pig A codes for a protein called GPI. GPI is a key protein that's a linker. So we have our red blood cell over here, and it has a little bit of GPI on the surface. And what GPI allows it to do is to bind this protein called the decay accelerating factor. It's also known as CD55. So CD55 is now in our red blood cell. And what that does is it protects the red blood cell from itself being lysed, similar to the bacteria, by this complement cascade. So it's going to go ahead and inhibit the formation of C3BB, right? So factor B binding is inhibited by decay accelerating factor. But if our pig A gene is mutated, okay, then we don't have our GPI, decay accelerating factor is not active, and our red blood cells are more susceptible to being lysed by this alternative pathway, especially at night. Now, why is that? Because at night, you breathe very, very slowly. So CO2 builds up in the blood, and as a result of that, the pH of the blood drops. And what pH does to this pathway is it activates binding of factor B to C3B. So we have low pH boosting the pathway in the serum. Red blood cells are around. They have nothing to protect them. And boom, they're going to lyse. You're going to get, as a result of that, you're going to get iron deficiency from the red blood cells lysing, an increased reticulocyte count, more unconjugated bilirubin, 
the patient's going to say they're peeing blood. It's going to look very dark, something like this. Okay. And you're going to have to diagnose the patient with paroxysmal nocturnal hemoglobinuria if you see a low CD55 in their electrophoresis. All right. So next thing I'm going to talk about very briefly before we stop here is a factor I. So factor I is another inhibitor of this pathway, and it's going to convert C3B to inactive C3B or IC3B. And that's just a little side note for you. All right. Okay. So I hope this video helped you understand this process a little better, and I'll see you in the next one.